years ago, I got the 4-inch Skymax from Skywatcher because I was looking for a lightweight and compact telescope that I could take away with me whenever I got to travel. And now, after a lot of observing sessions with it, I can say that the Skymax was at the time indeed the right telescope for the job. I can also say that after a lot of thinking and consideration, I decided that now is the time to part ways with it. Stick around to find out why. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. As I always like to say, the best telescope is not the biggest nor the one with the most features, but the one you use the most and this has always something to do with size and weight. It doesn't matter how good a telescope is if you are only going to use it a couple of times a year. With this principle in mind and also wanting something small enough that can easily be transported around, I set out back then to buy a new telescope. After careful consideration, I decided to get a 4-inch Maxutov Cassegrain telescope, which is known for the excellent image quality it is able to produce. So I ended up with the 102mm Skymax from Skywatcher in a combination with a lightweight AZ Pronto mount. What I was looking for besides size and weight were also good sharpness and a long focal length. The reason for this being that I was mainly interested in medium to high power planetary observations. For this, I wanted to be able to use one of my favorite eyepieces, the 9mm D-Light from Teleview. So the focal length of the telescope would have had to be long enough so that this eyepiece could yield a relatively high magnification, with a focal length of 1300mm and a 200 times maximum theoretical magnification, the 4-inch Skymax in combination with the D-Light would yield an actual magnification of 144 times, which is good enough for medium power planetary observations. After the telescope arrived and I started to use it, I quickly fell in love with it. It checked all the right boxes I had on my initial list. It was small and light. The mount, while not electronically assisted, was also light and steady. And the most important thing was that the telescope worked very well in combination with my eyepieces, yielding sharp and bright views with good contrast. And since it was so easy to transport and carry outside, I found myself using it much more often than my 12-inch solid tube Dobsonian telescope, even though the product was much more capable very much true to what I stated earlier. But all this sounds very good, so what changed now that I want to part ways with it? Well, it all started when I got the 90mm EVOSTAR refractor telescope, also from Skywatcher, for reviewing. This created a situation where I had a similarly priced telescope, but of a different type, to compare my beloved Skymax with, and from the moment I first looked through, I was hooked. And this entry-level refractor wasn't about to let me go so easily. From a design point of view, the EVOSTAR refractor wasn't as buttoned up as the SkyMax Mac. It was a bit rougher around the edges, more simple with lots of plastic parts, a very simple focuser and a rudimentary EQ mount. But for all of this, let's call it basicness, it featured an excellent optical system. At f10, the EVO star was able to produce some of the sharpest views I've seen to that date, even surpassing the SkyMax. The views were also comparable to the ones through the SkyMax in terms of brightness and contrast, all while presenting only with little chromatic aberrations. During the observing sessions that followed, I noticed that as I was nearing the maximum theoretical magnification of both telescopes, the EVO star was able to consistently deliver maximum sharpness without missing a beat. This is more that I can say about the SkyMax. As I was nearing its magnification limits, past 170 times or so, the views started to lose brightness and sharpness very fast. 
And before you ask, I've tested both telescopes side by side during the same observing sessions and therefore seeing conditions and also using the same eyepieces. This was enough to get me thinking about whether a refractor might actually be an upgrade worth considering. But I wasn't ready to give up on the Mac so easily, so I started looking for answers or better said for causes that might lead to the telescope not being able to reach its full potential. After all, a Mac, at least in theory, should be able to keep up with a similarly priced refractor telescope in terms of sharpness. Naturally, my go-to idea was that there might be something wrong with the collimation, even though star tests didn't show anything concerning. So I set out to check the collimation of the optical system. It turned out that the Mac was out of collimation, but only ever so slightly. Realigning it was however easier said than done. Checking if the mirror is collimated wasn't a problem, but trying to realign it really was. The reason for this is that the SkyMax model I had didn't feature any collimation screws for the primary mirror. So my only option was to loosen the screws holding the whole mirror cell assembly and trying to adjust the alignment of the mirror by carefully shifting the whole back plate of the telescope. Fortunately, the optical system wasn't bad out of collimation and only very minor adjustments were necessary. After I was confident that the optics were now perfectly aligned, I set out to do some more comparisons between the two telescopes. And while sharpness did improve slightly, the SkyMax still wasn't as sharp as the EVO star past 170 times magnification. After trying a few other things, like switching from a prism to a mirror diagonal without any significant improvements, I was finally ready to accept the idea that the SkyMax, at least the one that I had, had reached its limits and switching to a refractor telescope might be the only way to improve the views further. Fueling this thought was also the positive experience I had testing the new SV550 122mm from Siboni. Even though that telescope is in a completely different price category, it showed me the capabilities of a well-designed refractor telescope. With all this in mind, I set out once more to see if I could find a telescope that could check all my points on my list. This didn't change after all, only that this time it would be a refractor telescope that would need to check them. The new telescope still needed to be small and light enough, so I can take it with me whenever I travel. The aperture needed to be 4 to 5 inches and ideally the lenses should be made out of quality low dispersion glass to improve the views even further. A fast refractor, faster than f6, wasn't going to cut it because of the higher risk of chromatic aberrations. But an f9 or slower telescope like the EVO star that I liked so much earlier, would be physically too long at these apertures. So it had to be something in between like an F7 or F8. After a lot of research and stats comparisons online, I finally found a telescope that in my opinion is a true successor to my 4-inch SkyMax Mac. I'm talking about the 4-inch F7 SV503 from Sviboni. On paper it has everything I was looking for. Even if it is in another price category compared to the SkyMax, I decided to go ahead and order one, this being an upgrade after all. Since I wasn't going to keep two similar sized telescopes, this also meant that the SkyMax had to go which is why I recently sold it and used the money to get some of the costs for the SV503 back. I also sold only the OTA and kept the AZ Pronto mount and the Red Dot Finder as well for the use in combination with the new refractor. I don't want to spoil the review of the SV503, but now that I went through with my plan, I did end up with a much better setup than before and I'm very happy with it. Not only that, but the biggest pain point I had before regarding sharpness is now completely gone. Next, 
I will make a dedicated review of the SV503, highlighting the differences between it and the SkyMax. So if you want to find out how this story came to an end, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.